Okay, so I'm just going to show you now how I uh, go about sorting my wiring. Uh, this is the first officer's six pack, and I've just got it sitting on the top there because the first thing we need to do is work out what wire does which light. Uh, so what I've done is just wrapped a bit of masking tape around each of the uh, green cables, which are the negatives, and obviously the orange is the positive. So what I'm going to do is just take two of these batteries, and the reason I'm using two is because there's two LEDs uh, in each string, so I need to double up the power to make them light up. Uh, so what I'm going to do is hold the orange wire on the positive side of the batteries and then just run through each of the negatives uh, if I hold this on there you can see the air conditioning light has come on so I'll now mark on the tape that that's the air conditioning great timing So on to the next one. The um, dog is not barking, so I would assume that that's a phantom ring, which I keep getting for some reason. Well, that's the one we've already done. Uh, let's pick another one. My battery may have just gone flat. Oh no. Anti ice. We'll just jot that on there. So I'm going to continue going through like this until I've got all six cables marked up, and then we will go to the other end and see how we wire it there. Okay, so the tip I just gave about using two batteries put together, don't do it. Uh, what I've ended up doing is blowing two lots of LEDs. Uh, I don't understand why the other ones worked and two blew straight away, but there you go. That's my understanding of electronics for you. Uh, so I've now got to replace the overhead LEDs and the doors LEDs um, but this gave me a good opportunity to show you how it's wired inside so if I get a pointer here the orange wire coming in is the positive so it's the 5 volt line um, that runs to the positive side of the first LED and then what I've done is the positive side of the LEDs I've kept to the right hand side so up against the edge on this side and up against this edge for this row here so the positive pin of the LED I've just bent over and linked to the positive of this one and then again to the positive of the end one so them three LEDs are all using the same positive line. And then this yellow wire at the bottom just links the positive from this LED, jumps the power across to the positive on this side, and then again the pins are then linked to the two LEDs above. So all six outside LEDs share the same positive line and then the negatives which are the inside oops, which are the inside pins of both sets just have one wire soldered to them which then will go to our DM13 driver so at least it gave me an opportunity to show inside how it's been wired up but I'm now going to uh, replace the two blown sets of LEDs and we'll come back and we'll do another test with the correct voltage. 
Okay, so one of the things that I did when I built these six pack boxes was to super glue the LEDs in. So now naturally I can't get them out. Uh, don't super glue your LEDs in. Use hot glue or something like that. Something that's easy to pick away at and get rid of because once you super glue them in, they're there. They don't come out. Plan B. Plan C. As you can guess, I'm now going to reprint the box. Right, so I have made uh, a new six pack after my episode the other day, uh, and I've got it wired up exactly how the old one was. And if I show you around the front here, you can see it's all just hanging out the front at the minute. And the wires are coming through and I've clipped them all in place. So there we have the six wires for the six pack. That's the six negative sides of the LEDs. And the brown one is the five volts. So they come down here, they run through the back of the panel, through that hole uh, up there. And then I've clipped them all the way along the top of the panel. And then up this end, you can see they're just hanging loose here, ready to connect to the DM13, which is just in there where it says number 10. So I'm running three DM13s. There is one in there which is full of wires. There's another one next to it in there which is full. And then there's the third one over here. And they are all running as you can see off of pin 10 on the Arduino. So with the with this setup with the DM13s you can run um, 64 LEDs off of one Arduino pin. So I have three DM13s giving me 16 LEDs each and if I needed to I could add another DM13 onto that chain to give me a total of 64 but I don't need the fourth one. Uh, as it happens I have eight pins free on this board and we need six for the six pack and one for the uh, master caution and one for the fire warning so that's eight in total so we will end up filling that final board and that is the last uh, LEDs I've got to fit to the MIP so all LEDs on the MIP are being controlled by one pin on the Arduino so I, I get a lot of questions saying how can one Arduino one run a whole cockpit well that's how breakout boards uh, like I said 64 LEDs from one pin so for the overhead for example you're probably looking at two Arduino pins for the whole overhead um, LED wise anyway and then obviously the uh, the buttons all run through these multiplexers so again that's 16 buttons from one Arduino pin so that's where the LEDs are going to go uh, the power line is running down this side along the bottom here and just at the back there you can see that yellow board 
this one here that's my 5 volt breakout so this brown wire will be put onto there Uh, so that's the LED sorted. Uh, I haven't run the wires for the switches yet. All I've done is uh, connected the ground to the ground. Uh, runs to the six pack and then all I've done is done a link cable from the six pack out to the master caution and then another link cable to the fire warning. So that means I've only got to run one ground wire in. And what that does is come down here, again through the hole, and then I've just run it to the nearest ground source, which is the clock switch. So you can see it's just connected to the ground on the clock switches, which are in turn then linked to the main ground. So I shall show the button part in more detail in a minute, but for now we're going to do the LEDs. So I shall put you back on the tripod and we'll have a look. Okay, so we're just about ready to uh, fit the uh, re um, six pack after caution and fire warning. I uh, just thought I'd explain what I've done with the wire in this end. Uh, it looks a lot more confusing than it actually is. Uh, so if we we already know about the six blue ones and the brown one here, they're for the LEDs. So we're just going to ignore them because we've already talked about them. Right in the six pack, we have got two push button switches. So one in one in here, and one in there and the push button switches have four pins it doesn't matter which way round you wire them but the two pins that are furthest apart are effectively the same pin so I could have had my signal on the left and my ground on the right it wouldn't have mattered but whichever way you choose the two pins that are furthest apart are the same. So on this side, this is the signal wire. That pin there would also be the signal wire. So taking that theory over to the left, you've got the ground wire coming in here, which also means that this pin at the front here is also the ground. So I've used that to then daisy chain the ground over to this switch as well so this wire is our main ground feed coming in the ground then jumps through this wire over to this pin here and then being that this is the same pin as that one this wire then jumps and daisy chains over to the master caution switch it's exactly the same theory on that switch um, but there's only one switch in there so the ground comes into one side of the switch I've then used the same pin at the bottom to then jump across to the fire warning panel or fire warning switch so you don't have to do it like that well the reason I've done it like that is just to save on running three ground wires up from the Arduino um, so I just brought one ground wire into this one and then daisy chained the three together. Uh, with the six pack having two switches in, uh, what I've done is I've run two signal wires out, which then swap into that yellow one, which is the signal wire that goes to the Arduino. And the reason for that is if you just press one side of the switch, or the other, it doesn't matter which button actually presses, it's gonna send the signal to, uh, to the Arduino to make the button press in the sim. You don't have to do that, you could just run one button if you want. I mean, nine times out of 10, they press at the same time, but just in case, that's the reason I've wired both buttons up. 
same with this one, uh, exactly the same wiring system but only has one signal feed because there's only one button inside. And then again it's the same with the fire warning. Uh, I've done the same thing with the um, 5 volt power, so the 5 volt power is daisy chained. Uh, I didn't daisy chain this one because I, all the LEDs are right inside there, I couldn't get to them. Um, but this one, basically the power comes in and then daisy chains across to this one, or the other way around. Power comes into this one and then daisy chains back to this one. So they just share the same 5 volts. I hope that's as uh, clear as mud. So we're, I've just finished soldering up the signal wires. So these are actually ready to uh, pop back in now, if I can do it one-handed. So what I'll do is just to stop them, basically the wires just forcing them forward, uh, I will get my hot glue gun in the back there, just run some glue along the back of the button just to hold it in place. And I've got to make a new front. Um, I know you're probably thinking why didn't I save the front off the other one. I had planned to make a new one anyway um, because I'd at some point put a deep scratch in the paint so that was always the plan to make a new front on the other one hence why I left it on when I smashed it all up with the hammer so we'll have one more quick look around the back so what I've got left to wire up you can see that I've now done all the connections in there for the LEDs. Uh, these two blue wires here are the new ones I've just put in for the LEDs on the master caution and fire warning. So again, they've got to go on the uh, DM13 driver on the last two pins that I've got there. And then over here, these three are the signal for the button presses. Now, the reason I've used yellow is because I ran out of grey, simple as that. So I know that the yellow is the six pack uh, button press and the other two greys are the fire warning, master caution, button press signals. So they will be run all the way along the top, down the side to uh, number 14, last two pins on the end. And one of the pins on number 15 as well, because we've got three signal presses to do. And there's the uh, six pack front with the big scratch in it. So we are almost there, still got to just sort out, still testing something to do with the clock. Uh, and then we're pretty much done in the back here. Just a bit of tidying up with wiring to do. And uh, while I'm here, I've got some heavy duty right angle brackets just to put there, uh, just to give the, the whole MCP shelf a bit more strength. Um, probably put one each end maybe three more in the middle evenly spread just to uh, give that all a whole lot of strength and still some tidying up of wiring to do in there and the other EFIS to make which I'm really looking forward to not well that's all for now
Uh, next time you join me, we'll be testing out the six pack fire warning and master caution. Right, it's now time to uh, run the cables to our potentiometers and we're working on the AFDS flood uh, which is the light just above the MCP. Uh, the potentiometers that I'm using have got a click off function so we've got a switch as well as a potentiometer. So if we just pop this panel out, we have to be careful because we've got wires in there and we don't want to pull on them and if I just zoom you in a bit alright so this is the back of the potentiometer and the two pins here are actually for the click off switch and then I know they're out of shot but there's absolutely nothing I can do about it I can't get the camera any closer down here we have three pins and we are going to be using the left and the right one and what I've already done is uh, pre-wired a wire from one side of the switch to one side of the potentiometer pin so what we are now going to do is I've already run the cables this is a 12 volt feed line so we're going to run that onto there like that and then the other half of the cable which then goes up to our plug in the um, glare shield is going to go onto the other half of the potentiometer which is down in there but I've I've just poked this cable out of the way for the minute because I don't want to get mixed up which one's which. So we'll run the the power coming into the switch first. Uh, I've already pre-soldered the pin and I've pre-soldered the end of the wire. So I'm just going to pop a bit of solder on the iron. That's that one done. Now we can bring this one out and cut it to length. Now I've done my best to try and, because uh, obviously we've got the backlighting in there, so I'm doing my best to try and route the wires to not cover the uh, backlighting too much. When you get to the end of your build, that's when uh, things start getting tight and uh, I suppose uncomfortable is the word to try and get in there to uh, to get the final connections in place. Just see if we can balance the solder somewhere will I? Just in the end of the wire. OK. 
Okay, so this one is going to go onto that pin in there. And that should be that. Uh, while we've got this open, we'll give you a full look. Inside there, so we've got AFDS flood, which we've just done background lighting, um, which is the lights underneath the um, MCP shelf, and also underneath the two glare wings, uh, and then over here we've got. The main panel, which is all the backlighting, uh, such as this lighting in here, uh, and that's the backlighting for the MCP, the EFIS, and the main panel itself. Uh, over here, we have got a foot air switch, uh, which I will be rigging up to run a small fan just to blow some air out of here. So that's a connection I've still got to do. I did buy a um, like a 12 volt um, extractor, but uh, running that thing, it sounds like a jet engine taking off, so it's it's just too noisy. So I'm now gonna try and see if I can fashion some sort of duct for a 12 volt computer fan or something like that. Uh, if uh, if that doesn't blow enough air, then I don't know yet. I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. Uh, the encoders down here, the upper DU, brightness, lower DU, inboard DU and outboard DU. I don't think SimVim or HCSCI uh, currently supports dimming of the screens, but I am going to wire them up. Um, it just makes sense while I can get access to everything. Um, and then hopefully one day Vlad will make it available so that we can perhaps dim the screens, I don't know. Um, so yeah, just, just the encoders to wire up and then this panel can be completely closed up. The other air switch here will just be um, a dummy. But this one has actually got a working switch on the back of it, just a pull switch, if I can just show you in there, I don't know if you can see that, I can't turn the panel over anymore. And the uh, the duct is Carl Clark's duct. So let's uh, back the camera up and fire up the 12 volt power and see if we have light. Okay, it's now time to test the connections that we've just made. Uh, so if we... I will start with the one we've just done. You can see we've got AFDS floodlighting. And dimmable. Uh, background lighting, which is uh, connected exactly the same. So you can see we've got lights underneath the shelf and we've also got lights in the bottom of the two glare wings. I know the right one you probably can't see. And then we've got our main panel lighting which is probably too bright in here for you to see. Uh, the main panel lighting is not working at the minute because the, uh, the back lighting panel is stood over there behind the camera. So I'm still working on the wiring in the back. Uh, but what we'll do is just go flick the lights off. I'm trying to find my way back in the dark. <laughs> So there we go, you can see a little bit of the backlighting. I'm 
see we still need to um, fill in the gaps above the ephus and on the right hand side you can see I haven't got an ephus at all yet. So the background lighting is the one that lights the main panel up and you can see how bright that becomes on full brightness. So we'll turn the, uh, the back lighting off. We'll now turn the background light off and bring on the AFDS flood. And you can see as soon as I flick the switch it comes on and then from then on it's just a dimmer. And I know it's going to blow out on the camera but it is very bright. I mean, wouldn't really run it at that brightness but when you've got bag lighting anyway. And then just for good measure, level three on. So there we go, that's how I've wired up uh, the captain's knee pad, I suppose it's called, um, with the, the backlighting. Like I said, there's still the uh, encoders to do. The main, main panel brightness on the first officer side is just a dummy. There's no point uh, in wiring that up. If I do decide to do it at a later date, it's not too much of an issue. So my next job is now to do the first officer's six pack fire warning and master caution lights. So I shall join you in the next one. Hello guys, it's Ian here from Simbuild UK. Um, first things first, I have to apologise. Uh, it's been a long time since I got the last video out. Uh, various things really, my health, uh, with Miami, I've been having a lot of bad runs and also with the, the whole COVID thing and the lockdowns, you know, having my daughter a lot. So time has been very limited out here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I've been out here getting on with bits. Um, some of it has not been recorded because, you know, I had half an hour here, half an hour there. And by the time I've got all the camera equipment set up, it would have been time to pack it down, you know, and go back in. But um, what I'm hoping to do today is to, to kind of bring you up to date uh, with how the sim is today. Uh, like I said, it's the 23rd of August 2021. Um, hopefully this video will be going out today um, and also there'll be um, part three uh, of the MIT build which will be going out today also. So you'll be getting two videos today um, which will bring you right up to date. Uh, with where the sim is at the minute. Uh, as you can see that the sim has progressed quite a bit. Uh, I haven't filmed it all, uh, mainly because uh, a lot of the woodworking that's gone on is done from uh, Carl Clark's plans, I'm sure you've heard of him. So there's really no point in me documenting it because he's already done it. Uh, it's his work, it's brilliant. Um, everything has come together nicely. So what I'll do now is uh, I'll take you in for a closer view of how everything is looking uh, and I'll talk about some of the bits I've done, what I've got to do, what's on the bench behind the camera uh, and what's coming up in future videos. Uh, if there is anything you want me to go into further detail with please just let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to try and cover everything I can. Um, I'm still new to this sort of filming. Uh, what I've done is I've got myself a new camera which I'm talking to you on now. So hopefully the future videos will be better quality and a lot easier for me to organize and keep on top of. And hopefully the videos will come out more regularly um, purely because it's, uh, everything's gonna be better organized for me to be able to put the videos together, get them edited and get them out. So I'll take you in now and show you what we've got. Mm. 
you'll have to excuse my handheld filming. Um, okay, let's get my chair out of the way. Very professional setup I've got here with the camera. <laughs> So everything is still a little bit messy because I'm now sort of finishing off the mip um, and getting everything together but you can see how much the sims progressed uh, since the last videos I've done. Um, the current setup with the projector I've got here, I've only got one at the minute but the plan is to have three and to have the screen wrap all the way around. Uh, down here I've got uh, a couple of window frames that I've started making and the main seals. I just haven't been able to get out and do any woodwork for a long time so everything's sort of ground to a halt on that at the minute. Uh, down here I'm in the process of making my own rudder pedals. Um, they will come up in a future video because uh, at the moment I haven't got any rudder pedals. Uh, the throttle is uh, all 3D printed by me. Um, again, something I haven't videoed because it's based on uh, the throttle quadrant that you can find on Thingiverse by USA Jet. So thank you very much for, to him. Uh, I have made a fair few changes of my own. Um, his design used uh, motors uh, in the throttle, whereas I've changed them to servos. Also, his design didn't have the speed brake motorised, uh, so I've added a servo in there. So both throttles are motorised. And the key brake is also motorized. Uh, flaps are working as they should. Um, so with this throttle, it's it's just I, I do want a proper metal one, but obviously they're a lot of money and I can't afford it. So hopefully in time, maybe uh, if I come into a bit of money or you know I'm able to save up, I would like to replace it. But just for now, I've built this one just because I needed a throttle. Uh, I will go into a bit more detail on that um, at a later date, you know, if it's requested for. Uh, the yoke is again uh, Carl Clark's build. Uh, they are dual linked. So if I move this one, you can see the other one is moving. Uh, and also you see the pitch. Still playing around with the springs on that uh, with regards to the pitch to, to try and find a nice weight. All the mechanism is under that hatch in the floor there. Um, but it's it, more or less exactly as his design. I just changed a few bits just to make it more convenient for my setup. Uh, the side wall, again, Carl's design, still working on it. It's had its uh, first coat of paint. And I've started fitting some of the panels in there. I've still got to do work on the oxygen panel and the map light panel there. Uh, in these holes, I'm going to have a real uh, USB fitted in there and a real mic connector panel so I can just plug my headset in. That's just for the vent. Moving along to the actual MIP, uh, you can see the air vent there is still not finished. Come along here, the system test light, everything works on that. I haven't got any uh, sound on at the minute so you can't hear the, uh, the warnings going on. Uh, brake pressure gauge and flat gauge are all working although I have disconnected them for now because the card that controls them will be going up in the forward overhead when it arrives just because there's many gauges in the overhead 
so it made sense to, to mount the card up in the overhead and then just run the wires down for these two gauges here. The uh, main displays are all run by ZHSI, uh, which is running on a separate computer. It's a domain sim. The FMC you saw me build is running with Air Manager. Uh, so that's everything is working on that. Uh, we can, you've seen me do all this before. But the backlighting is not currently wired up because that will wire down to the pedestal for the FMC. Going across here, both clocks are working fine. And the other one over there. The fire warning and master caution and the six pack is all up there. You've seen that working uh, in the previous video. Captain Zephus is all working fine. MCP is working fine. Got a little bit of fettling to do on that. Uh, I have built the other Ethos. Um, using the same method as I did for that one. So that's all working fine. Uh, worked exactly as the real one with the uh, press buttons on here and here. You can see that changing down there as I press it. And of course the first officer's six pack caution and fire warning. Uh, what else have I done? I fitted a mic button there just so that I don't have to touch the yoke. Uh, behind here is a trigger for doing the um, push the torque, but obviously, when it's on autopilot, I don't really want to be tucked in the yoke, so I'll be using that switch up there uh, to torque on that sim while the autopilot's on. This knob. Uh, I've tried to hide out the way under here, uh, it's obviously not on the real aircraft but what that does is if I rotate it you can see that it brightens and dims all my seven segments so the clocks are all on the same, same knob. Still waiting for Vlad. Uh, from whatever it's called now, it keeps changing its name. It was Simvim, then it was HCSCI, and now it's Simvim X. So hopefully, he'll find a name that he likes soon uh, and stop confusing the hell out of us. But yeah, the, the clocks aren't currently working properly. Uh, the clock works, but the uh, chrono and the flight time and everything I, ca I can't get working. It just I can start the, uh, actually I can show you, if I press that you can see I can start the timer and uh, I've also put an LED behind the ET bit so I get a green light when the clock is running. Um, so I can start it, I can stop it, but I cannot reset it. There's nothing I can do to reset it.